How long would it take you to solve 715 Sudoku puzzles? You probably do not want to spend the time to solve that many puzzles, much less make a video of each of those solves. I'm going to condense my favorite techniques from all my solving videos to give you five core lessons that you can use to solve almost any Sudoku puzzle, starting with this one. And with that, it's solving time. So lesson number one, if you see it, solve it. So when you look at this puzzle, if you're like most people, you likely start at scanning from the top left. If you work here and pause for a second in block two, you can see some quick solves. With these twos, there's only one place to put a two right there. And then with these threes, there's only one place to put a three right here. And then you'll notice with this five, you can solve that cell for a five. Greetings, friend. I've analyzed and solved thousands of Sudoku puzzles and made videos from over 700 of those solves. Now I want to share with you five core lessons that you can use to solve not just Sudoku, but any general puzzles in your life. So let's continue with lesson one. If you see it, solve it. You notice right here, we got all these cells solved. We can mark a four and a nine right there. Come on down here to block eight. Very similar looking. You'll see with these fives and these fives, you can solve this cell for a five. And then with these sixes and the six here, you can solve this for a six. And you'll notice with the two, you can solve that for a two and put a one seven right there. So you do not need to start with marking. You can go and find an easy solve just when you see it, just solve it right away. And then you may notice because you have a one seven here, a four nine here, and then a two, three, five, and six in the column, you can solve the cell right away for an eight. And this is similar to a productivity rule. They'll say if you can do something in less than five minutes, instead of putting it on a list, just take care of it immediately. The same with these easy solves. So lesson number two is cause and effect. I also call it RCB which means row, column, and block. It's a, something I got from three-time world Sudoku champion Thomas Snyder. Once you make a key solve, look at the impact on the row and the column and the block. Uh, the idea is to come back to the origin block instead of wandering somewhere else in the grid. So what you might see here is since you solved this eight and you filled up column four, what else can be right here? You got a one, three, four, five, seven, eight in the column. You just need a two, six, and a nine. So that can't be a six, and that can't be a nine. And you go over here with the two, six, nine, three, eight, five in the block. You just need a one, four, and a seven. Well, with these two sevens, you can solve that for a seven. You got a one, four right there. And so now, if you're too systematic, you might waste time looking somewhere else in the grid. But if you stay right here, you saw you can get that seven and establish a better flow from the cell you're in. Now, let's move to lesson number three. Lesson three is understanding the pressure points of a puzzle. You want to know where there are one step restrictions, something that if you remove that one restriction, you'll be able to make a solve. Since the row column block for block five dried up, that's the time to start looking for pressure points. The way I do it is by looking for digit restrictions from one to nine. So if you start with the ones, you'll notice with these two ones in rows one and three, and this one, you can solve for a one in block three. There's no other places to do marks right now or solves with the ones. So move on to the twos. You'll see with this two coming down, this two cutting across, you have two places for a two in block seven. And these twos are a pointing pair since they're in the same column. You can't put a two here, here, or you'd eliminate all two possibilities in block seven. Three places for a two in block four. I'm not going to mark that because with one step restrictions, you just want to know there's only two possibilities remaining. Nothing else you can do with the twos. Move on to the threes. With this three and this three, you got two places for a three in block six. Nothing else with the threes. Move on to the fours. With these two fours. Two places for a four in block nine. And you might notice I'm going sequentially, one all the way up to nine, because I can easily remember 
which digits I've looked at and which ones I still have to go. Uh, that's just a technique. I recommend it for you. It's also easier for you to follow along what I am doing. No more with no more marks with the fours. Move on to the fives. With these, this five cutting across and this five coming up, you have a pointing pair of fives in block three. They go with this five, limits fives in block six. And then with this five and the five here in column three, two places for a five in block four. Okay, move on to the sixes. You're going to get some solving here. With these sixes and this six, you can solve for six in block one. And then follow the impact with these sixes and this six. Solve for six here in block three. And then with this six, solve for six in block six. And now you can eliminate the six here. Only place for six in block five is right there. So you make that mark and we took care of all of the sixes. Now move on to the sevens. With this seven and these two sevens, you can solve for seven in block one. And then with these two sevens and this seven, the sevens are restricted to these two cells in block seven. You notice it's the same two cells as the twos. So you have found a two seven hidden pair. No other candidates can be in those two cells. So you want to mark that. And then in block eight, sevens are restricted there. We've already marked that. Move on to the eights. With this eight cutting across row two, two places for an eight in block one. No other marks for the eights. Move on to the nines. And you might see that there's only two places for a nine in block three. And with this nine and this nine, two places for a nine in block nine. And now it's time for the question of the day. What has Sudoku taught you about life? Please, please share it with me. Is it something about frustration? Is it about overcoming challenges? I'd love to hear from you. Help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. And I re respond to every comment. So it's time for lesson four. Lesson four is to consider new information that comes along. You notice I went sequentially from one to nine, but you also notice we made some solves along the way. So go back through and see if there's some new, now new information. We're going to be able to make more solves and marks. You might see, for example, because of that hidden pair in block seven with the ones cutting across, you have a pointing pair of ones in block seven. You go with this one, and now you can mark ones and the restrictions right there in block four. And then with the fours, with this four in row one, you can mark these two cells for a four and then something interesting is going on here and I'll highlight this what you might notice is the fours are restricted in blocks three and nine to column seven and eight so a four can be either here or here or here or here use this information to figure out a restriction here in block six specifically you'll notice that the fours are restricted in column nine to block six they can only be in these two spots. That makes them a claiming pair. It's one of the seven top strategies I teach in my free Sudoku solving guide. But you need that information to start cleaning up block six and make more progress in this puzzle. And so now you've done that. Look at the impact in the row common block. This is a critical solve that you make right here. And I'll remove these colors. What can be in here now? And what you might notice is that you have these three cells cannot be two, three, a four anymore, six or a seven or a nine. So they are a one, five, eight naked triple. This can't be a five. This can't be an eight. And this can't be a well, it can be a 1, 5, or an 8. And since 1, 5, 8 are restricted there to these three cells, they're a naked triple for the column, which puts just a 4 and a 9 here, but they're also a lock triple, so they're a naked triple for this block. And it now restricts the remaining digits of block 3, 2, 3, and 4 to these three cells. You know the 4 can't be there, and you know the 3s are in these two spots, because of the three in row six. And this is huge. Now you've made all of these deductions by noticing the impact on row, column, and block. 
And now let's look at the impact on block three. Because you can't have an eight here anymore, you have this eight cutting across, you end up with a pointing pair of eights right there in row one. So an eight can't be here. Whenever you have that pointing pair, you can displace one of those marks. You know you can solve the other cell right away. So now you can solve that cell for an eight. And that's about it. The next solve is going to be a bit tricky. But don't fret. You are so close to getting that next solve and where to go from here. And this brings up lesson number five. So lesson four was considering new information. Lesson five is that difficulty is relative. There's actually two ways to make progress from this point. It just depends on what you notice or what is easier for you personally to find. This puzzle is rated medium, meaning it doesn't need any more of those top seven strategies. Naked triple, naked pairs, hidden pairs, uh, naked hidden singles, and claiming and pointing pairs. However, if you focus on the pairs, what you would have to find is in here in row four. What you need to notice is the restrictions on twos and fours. Since these twos are here as a hidden pair, they're also a pointing pair. So two can't be there, but you'll notice a four can't be here either. And then with this two, four, two and four can't be here. Because of the naked triple, two and a four can't be here. And then what you see is that a two and four can be there. So what does that mean? Where can the two and the four go in row four? Well, it can only be in these two cells. They're both restricted to the same two cells. Whenever you have that situation, you have found a hidden pair, two, four. But this hidden pair is pretty tough to find because it's in two different blocks and you have to use this pointing pair here, this naked triple here, just to find it. But what you can do with that is remove a three from right there because you know a two or four has to be here in this orange cell and the other one has to be in this orange cell. So we can remove that mark. If you're just going for medium strategies, that's just what you would have to find. But when I saw this for the first time, I actually found something a little easier. I marked this for a five nine, and then I noticed that the nines are restricted to these two cells in row one. They only be in these, so that makes them a conjugate pair. So a nine's either here, if it's not here, it has to be there. And I'll color that in blue. And then you also notice that if you come down here to row nine, where can a nine be? It's going to be in one of these two cells. A nine can either be here or here. So you have two sets of conjugate pairs. And by looking at the exterior of the puzzle, you notice that they share a base here. They share column one. And then the tips are in two separate columns in the same three block band. So what does that mean? It means with these conjugate pairs, either a nine's right here, and any cell that sees it can't be a nine. If it's not there, then you force a nine here, a nine can't be there, and you end up with a nine right there in the blue cell. This shows you that a nine's got to either be either here or it has to be there. This is a Sudoku skyscraper. And what you can do is eliminate a nine from any cell that sees these two cells. So if it shares a row, column, or block, you can eliminate if it shares both. So this cell right here shares the block and the column, you can eliminate a nine. This cell right here also shares column and block, you can eliminate a nine from right there. If that is easier for you to see, and technically a skyscraper is a more advanced strategy, then go for it. And now let's see what's the impact of either one of those. If that's easier for you, then difficulty is a little bit more relative for you. Start with the threes here. We'll remove the colors and go, what was the impact of this three solve? You would notice is that you remove the three from here, you can solve this cell for a three. And then with this three, two places for a three in block nine, and then in block four with this three and this three and the three here, you can mark threes right there. And that would help you move on with this puzzle. Now, what about those skyscraper nines. What did that do? Well, you remove the nine from here, you can solve this cell for a nine. You remove the nine from there, and you can solve that cell for a four. But let's follow the nines a little bit more. This four displaced the nine from right there, which allows you to solve this for an eight, solve that for a five. And then this nine allows you to solve for the five nine right here, and continue to follow the nines. 
you'll see that with this nine and this nine and this nine right here, you can solve for nine and block seven. And with this nine, solve for the nine right there, displacing the five, displacing the one, displacing the three. And with this nine, you can disambiguate the two nine right there. Super impactful by finding that skyscraper. You saw how much progress you can make using the skyscraper. And so now, after finding this, to continue solving any puzzle, just want to cycle through the previous lessons. If you see it, solve it. Look at cause and effect with the RCB. Understand those pressure points. Consider the new information that comes along. And, of course, difficulty being relative. Where can we go from here? What you might notice, let's look down column 8. You displace a 4, so that's got to be your 4, and that's going to be your 2. And then with this 2, you can disambiguate the 7, 2 right there. Disambiguate the 1, 7 right there. You can displace this one, and this is why you're using those restrictions, the one-step restrictions. You see how quickly you can solve the next cell. You have a full house in column one, so you know you can solve this cell and this one right away. I don't see a three, so that's got to be your three, and this is going to be your eight. So then you can displace the three from right there, solve this cell for three, leaving an eight in block nine. So now you solve block nine. And then we can move on and see where else to solve. With this 9, that's got to be a 4. That's got to be your 9 to finish all the 9s. And then with this 1, that's got to be the 8. And you can remove the 8 from right there. But with the 5 right here, there's your 1, there's your 5. Attack the marks first. That will get you your quickest solves. Now with this 4, I know that's a 2, that's a 4. Because immediately you're going to those one-step restrictions. With these two 4s, Impact RCB, impact on this block is that that has to be a 4. With these 2s, that has to be a 2, and your last digit is going to be an 8. Now apply the core lessons you just learned to solve this next video. Thank you so much for watching.